Hey guys, I don't know if this has ever happened to you in other careers, but in home performance, most of my family has no clue what Grace and I do. They know it has something to do with homes because it's in the name. So we're gonna stop talking about it and actually show them. This is a house that belongs to my parents. And what I love about this house, the reason that I pushed for them to choose a house like this is it's one story under an attic that is vented over a crawl space that is vented. That is, first of all, very simple shape-wise and also very easy to fix because you can see all of the issues there available right there. So we're gonna uh, actually not just test this house, of course, testing is what this channel is about, but also we're gonna go ahead and retrofit it. We're gonna do a full crawl space retrofit for air sealing and insulation. We're gonna do a full attic retrofit for air sealing. Uh, and we're not gonna worry about the HVAC. That's another system. The two systems that are involved in performance, of course, are the enclosure and the engines. The engines, we're gonna leave out of this conversation today. But this series is all about how to test and uh, improve the enclosure. And so let's go inside and figure out what we're gonna test this with in the first place. Now, aside from the blower door that you saw is already set up in the front door of the house, uh, we have a number of tools that we're gonna to be using. Now, these are all dependent on having a blower door. If you do not have a blower door, you are not an enclosure expert. So please make sure HVAC guys especially get a blower door, you need one. At least know where you can borrow one and have training in it. First of all, infrared camera. This one happens to be in the tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, you do not need one of those. We need one because our job is to tell the story of what is going on with home performance. But for you, you can get one that you put in your pocket for $200 if you want a consumer model. 400 bucks and you get a FLIR 1 Pro uh, and the list goes up from there. But at the very least, have something that you have with you all the time because it's good to be able to look at things. So we're obviously gonna be using this. It's a sexy tool. Here we have a manometer that is monitoring all the time the pressure in the attic and the pressure in the crawl space. Both of those are in relationship with the main body of the house where I'm sitting right now. So this is the pressure in the attic with reference to uh, the house. And this is the pressure in the crawl space. This one happens to be green. The reason that hoses are colored is not because they do different things. It's just to help you remember what you did. So this one is green for grass. That's the crawl space on the ground. This one is blue, like the sky, like the attic. The reason that I'm gonna be monitoring these is this is called a zonal pressure test very important to run. And this is how we're gonna track before and after, not just aside from the blower door number, that's just a big number that includes all the gaps and cracks in it. When we make a change in just the crawl space, we wanna know how much difference we made. Blower door number overall might not show that much change, but the zonal pressure test number would show a massive change. And that's what we're gonna be looking for. And again, we're gonna be doing all this work ourselves. So I'm gonna be um, slightly embarrassed if I don't do that great of a job. This is important to monitor and I've got that hooked up all the time so that we can track that. Here we're tracking the pressure in the house with reference to outside through the blower door manometer. And right now, all of these numbers are hovering around zero. That is good, but it's also perhaps the mark of a house that is super leaky, that just is basically outside itself. We're gonna find out which it is. The tiny lab is also pressure balanced and also has perfect zonal pressure proportions, uh, but that's for a totally different reason. So we're gonna test and find out exactly why all of these numbers look so beautiful and right around zero. We also have these. These are tiny temperature and uh, humidity data trackers that I have several of hooked up around the house. And basically you can just hang them from the uh, pull chain on your fan in the middle of a room or on a hanger in a closet if you want to. And I've just got these positioned all over the house. I can track now and I make a map, just like I'm gonna make a map of the zonal pressures around the house, of what rooms are uh, maybe picking up more heat from the sun from outside in the summertime or are being overly cooled by the air conditioner. Of course, every uh, house's enclosure is informing the HVAC system. The HVAC system job is to take out the heat that's added. So we've got heat coming in and then heat being taken out by the air conditioner. And in wintertime, it's the opposite. But it's those two things always. So if we have something that's uncomfortable in a room, it might be because it's being over-conditioned by the furnace of the air conditioner, or it might be because uh, it's got too much load, too much bleed to outside. This will help us figure that out. We're also tracking carbon dioxide and temperature and relative humidity in this room where I'm sitting right now, which is very cool with this new Testo uh, wireless probe kit. And we can see that we're floating at less than a thousand parts per million of carbon dioxide, which we're gonna find out a lot more about what that means during home chem, which is the giant indoor chemistry uh, experiment that's happening this year. And you'll see a lot more about this on this channel. So make sure that you're subscribed here. 
Uh, but that's an important number to have in mind as we begin, because as we air tighten this house and air seal it, that number might start going up, in which case we're gonna need to ventilate, of course. This is a pressure pan. You can actually make one of these out of anything that is rigid and solid, like a cardboard box, if you wanna be really hack about it, uh, that's got a weather stripping on it that you put a hose in. This is for zonal pressure testing, for zones that don't have a door, like for example, wall cavities, recessed lights, ducts, things like that. Of course, we're gonna be using this, and this is a flow hood, and we're actually gonna find an interesting creative use for this today as well, because we have a vented crawl space, so we have giant duct registers that we can measure the airflow through. And this is one of the interesting things about diagnostics. When you do this all the time, you can start to think of creative ways of using your equipment where nobody thought that we would be using this to test the enclosure, but of course it's possible because all things are possible. Proof is possible. The first thing that we've always done without uh, diagnostics, it doesn't matter, what we do next is get the homeowner's wants and needs. And in this case, we've got my mom and my dad. And my dad likes to have utter control over everything, over every thermostat, just like your dad does. My mom has cold feet, probably just like your mom does. So she has to wear slippers and she's like, now she'd inform me that she's taken to wearing two to four pairs of socks every day. So we wanna make this floor warmer. So of course, those things and the temperature evenness across the house, which we're tracking, all of that is the end goal at the end of this project, and that's what we're really doing with performance, is making any person happy with a unique home that they've got. Just going in and air sealing because air sealing is good is the wrong approach every single time. You want to make sure you're serving a specific need, and so that's what all this stuff is for, is just to help us know and prove that we have given this client what they're paying for. My mom and dad will know what we do for a living, and they will be happy, so that is all good. Now, before we start with the blower door test, we're gonna use our friend the infrared camera and do a pre-air leakage scan. This is a really important step to do if you really wanna know what the enclosure is doing. You've got things that are air leakage problems, you've got things that are insulation problems, you've got things that are moisture problems. Once you run the blower door, you will not see anything except things that involve air leakage because it's gonna be so loud. That's what the blower door is beautiful for, is it puts your entire house on a treadmill and it makes air leakage everything. So if you wanna know what things are both insulation and air leakage problems and what is just an insulation and not an air leakage problem and also detect moisture, this is an important step. Now, you would do this in the entire enclosure, all the exterior walls, why it's important to inspect first, you know where the enclosure is supposed to be. Um, I'm just gonna show you this a little bit. So I would start at the front door and I'd move clockwise on each floor. Here, we're in the first floor, this is only one story. Um, we have windows, don't look at windows with infrared, it's silly. We also have uh, what looks like a heat bleed problem happening right up here. That's definitely an insulation issue that's going on. We have something that might be a moisture issue. Anything that I ping as a moisture issue, I would immediately go to and use my moisture detector that's a dedicated tool to tell whether something is wet. Important not to just say, oh, it's wet, because I saw it with pretty colors. So I'm gonna look at this later. And also we have the fireplace. This actually should show up under air leakage because generally chimneys and fireplaces are a big deal. And back there, you can see the attic access, which already is hot before we even run the blower door. So that also is probably an insulation problem at that point. Now, once we have all of that stuff mapped out and I've made notes of all the things or taken pictures of everything that I wanna know is an insulation problem before we run the blower door, now we kick on the most important tool. Blower door is set up. We have the covers in place, and that's important. All doors and windows are also closed outside, and we are running at a baseline pressure on channel A of roughly zero. Each pascal, in very layman's terms, is basically the weight of a post-it note, if you think of it that way. It means it's just a very, very slight pressure. So we don't have to worry if it's negative one or positive one. The goal of baselining, which would be the next step that we would do, is to make channel A say zero. Since we're already at zero because the wind is not very strong, we have a very short house, not a very tall one, which means we don't have to run baseline. It saves me five or 10 seconds, that's great. Uh, so first thing that we're gonna do is run this up to 50 pascals. Now it's important to know what number you expect to see for a couple of reasons. Number one, you wanna know what fan to bring. I have at my disposal about 15,000 CFM of air that I can move, that's three blower doors. I'm not gonna bring all three, number one, to any job, but generally I'm not even gonna bring two, and to this house I'm definitely not bringing those. So this house is about 2,000 square feet, and I'm gonna expect, before I come, that I'm gonna see about one CFM of flow for each square foot. 
of floor area. So I'm going to expect about a 2000 TFM. That really leads me to the second issue, which is what ring am I going to use when I first run the blower door? You could start at the smallest one and work your way up, and it could take you five or ten minutes to do that. Or you could just jump to the number that you think you're going to see at the get-go, and that will take you there. I'm going to go ahead and run this at open because I already know that we're going to see a leakier space than what we expect because I've already inspected this house. Now you can see we're climbing. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the fan off because we don't need it right now. We have reached about 50 pascals and we have a flow of about twice as much as we expected, 4300 CFM. I'm going to mark that down and now we can start exploring the house, unless I want more numbers. So there's two ways of running a fan. You could run it so that it blows out, that's called depressurization, or you could run it so it blows in, that's pressurization. If you want to be awesome, more awesome than everyone else, you do both, which is what we're going to do. Now that I flip the fan around, all I have to do is rerun the same test. In different models of blower doors, you have to do a few different things. For a RetroTech, you don't have to do anything. You just literally press go again. Now again, I can go ahead and press hold and turn off the blower door so that I can think straight. Uh, what we found is that we got to about the same number, or approximately 50. I'm using the at 50 function on the blower door so that I can know exactly what it would be if we were at 50.0 on the dot. That's a cool uh, feature of manometers. And we're getting a higher number than we were on depressurization. That tells us a couple things. Number one, you expect to see that generally. If you have a house that's built with building paper, you're gonna see that when you suck in on the building paper, it's gonna seal itself better. And when you blow into it like a balloon, it's gonna flap open if it's not taped. That's one way to test whether a house has been taped on the building paper. You wouldn't think that you could do that, but just because it's invisible to the eye doesn't mean that it's not testable. Also, every single damper in a house, if you've got exhaust fans in bathrooms, exhaust fans in kitchens, is going to blow open when you bring air into the house, but it's going to suck tight shut when you suck air into the house. And so that is another thing that we're testing. This house only has two exhaust fans, one in the kitchen and one in one of the bathrooms. So it's probably not just those dampers, it's probably a couple other things going on. Now we have more data than the average blower door tester, which is awesome. More information always wins the argument. However, the reason most people are gonna run it in depressurization mode exclusively is because you can see with the infrared camera inside the house during depressurization mode. So when you blow air out through that fan, air comes in and it's gonna light up the infrared camera screen. Now you can see that number one, the attic hatch is also an air leakage spot. You could tell that by just looking at it, there's no weather stripping to be seen. But also we're picking up now top plate leakage. You can see in the top of that wall, right next to the attic hatch, air is coming down and that's coming from the attic. So that's called top plate leakage and that's something that we can fix with the retrofit that we're gonna do up in the attic. We can look down and see fingers of air coming from the crawl space, which is a totally different temperature. That's cooler air coming in, and that's because we've been air conditioning the house and all the air conditioning is sinking down to the crawl space. So now we're backwashing all of that air conditioning back up into the house. So it's gonna look like cold fingers. Fingers is what we're looking for when we do air leakage diagnostics with an infrared camera. So when we scan over, we can see that the border of the actual fireplace now is showing up as an air leakage issue. You can see this big bright line here. And also, oh boy, we've got a giant bunch of fingers coming out around the fireplace insert. This is a gas uh, fireplace. And so we've got all kinds of little seams and joints and things like that of the mechanism inside of that that are just not airtight. We're gonna wanna get at that at the attic plane if we can. We can see here, we've got a lot of air leakage coming in, nice bright lines through the top. We can see that built-in cabinet right there also has a fair amount of air leakage. Anything that's built-in cabinet-wise, sliding door-wise, that's generally gonna be a major pathway as well. And we can see same old stuff that we saw in the get-go. So now we know that we've got some things that are insulation problems that are not air leakage problems. Like for example, this big patch in the corner, that's insulation missing. There's not necessarily anything to do with air leakage there. Now we're gonna continue throughout the house, monitor everything, take pictures of anything that's gonna be useful, take pictures of just one example of something that's not gonna be useful, like for example, windows. Everybody wants to know what their windows look like. 
and we're going to monitor all of this stuff with the infrared camera, take pictures of it, and then also go up and feel it because it's important to have two points of reference for any diagnostic. You don't want to trust just one piece of equipment with your entire story. Here's an interesting trick where you can use the sun as a warming device. On a day when it's 70 degrees outside, 70 degrees inside, a lot of people think you can't use a lot of these home performance diagnostics. Totally not true. There's always a couple things working for you. The sun is going to be out. Uh, even if it's cloudy, it could be infecting things. You've got buffer spaces like the attic is going to be warmer than the house. You've got cooler spaces like the crawl space is going to be cooler than the house. So all kinds of things going on. Here, I'm actually using the fact that the sun is shining hard on that wall for the last hour or more, warming it up and it has not been shining on this wall ever. That wall faces a direction where the sun never shines. So I'm able to see the sun wall and the non-sun wall in one picture, and I can see that the relationship of the cavities to the studs is the same on both walls. And that tells me that these walls appear to be insulated. You always want to say, it appears to be that, because unless you drill a hole in that wall, you really can't tell. But this is just one way of kind of inducing an experiment to warm one wall, not warm another wall, and see if they look the same. That would tell you that these do look like they are insulated. The pressure in the attic, with reference to the house, is 48 pascals. 50 would be perfect for the blower. That would say it's 100% outside. You use this number, divided by the pressure that we're out of the blower door to get the zonal pressure proportion, ZPP. That's a 96% connection to outside. Now, we're gonna use the fact that we know for a fact there's a bunch of openings to outside through the roof to inform that number. The crawl space also, that's about a 92% connection to outside. That also is pretty good, but again, you wanna know we've got big openings to outside. How many openings are there between the house and the crawl space? That's really what zonal pressure proportion is about. We're gonna make both of these numbers different. This one to the attic, we want to make all the way 50 if we can. This number, we want to make zero if we can. So you grab your manometer, you grab your hose, go to a bedroom. Put the hose on into the room, close the door without pinching the hose. You can immediately feel, if you are in bare feet like I am, that there is air rushing out trying to get back to the blower door. And we can see that that room, the master bedroom, is about halfway outside. It's about 25 fiftieths outside. That's 50%. That room is super confused. It needs help. Now we can go in with infrared and find out where exactly those leaks are coming from. We can also use the pressure pan to do that. Now, when we first scanned this room, there was not what we're about to see. You can see here that there is wood paneling covering the walls, not drywall. This stuff is horrible for air leakage generally. Whenever you see this in a room, Bam, you know that there's going to be a lot of air leakage coming through the actual paneling and coming down from the attic and up from the crawl space. You can see it coming all over the place, coming down from the attic mostly, coming around that window. A lot of people think that windows are bad themselves. It's generally the way that the window is installed that's going to be bad. And you can see it basically the whole room round. These are definitely pictures that people need to see, not pictures of windows and doors, because those are going to be suspected by them. This stuff is never suspected by normal people. Now, for spaces that don't have a door, like wall cavities, you use your pressure pan. Uh, anything that is totally inside the house, like the inside of the pan is inside the house, is going to read zero. This is what it looks like when you have something that's not inside the house. That's a 31, we'll call it. 31 out of 50 is about 62% outside. This is a totally interior wall. It has nothing to do with outside, except attic and crawl space. So now we've just verified that this thing has leakage. As a little bit of trivia for those of you who do test, the pressure pan over an exhaust fan should show as almost 50 or as close to 50 as possible, which this one does. That is good. That tells you that this thing is ducted to outdoors, not just to the attic, for example. If the attic was a 30 and this showed 30, it would tell you that this is ducted into the attic. If it showed zero, it would show that it's not ducted at all. It's just going right into the, the ceiling cavity here. The only other opening that's available to this fan that I just blocked off from the house is outdoors. That's good. Crawl space vent, flow hood. I can see that on this one, I've got over 100 CFM going through this vent right now. There are 11 of these. I would want to test each one to make sure that it's not just that I'm very close to the blower door that this is happening, but if you just take it theoretically, 100 CFM times 11 is 1100 CFM. That's a lot that's adding to my blower door number. 
that's how you can start to think about creatively how to take your performance contracting to the next level. Next episode in this series is going to be addressing this crawl space, the first important place to get to in the summertime. Make sure you subscribe, comment, participate. Tune in next time. Thank you.